The Omsati region borders the Kunene province of Angola in the north and the Kunene, Ohangwena and Oshana regions domestically. The word Omusati in Oshiwambo means place of the Mopani tree and refers to northern Namibia's most common and dominant tree species. The Omusati region is considered to be the cradle of the recent revolution for Namibian independence. With its iconic vegetation, diverse cultural heritage, unique wildlife sanctuaries, the Omsati region welcomes you. Named after the Omankono village near Ongulumbashe, this group started off as a village football club. This dance is called Ompembe and is only practiced by Akwaruvi and Anganjela people. They sing and praise manhood as they dance. The clothing they wear today mimics the animal skins Akwaruvi men used to wear. The Faleniko cultural group's name translates to bringing knowledge and skills to their community. They document their history through dance and song. Here, the Ompembe passes from older brother down to younger brother. The Evanda Cultural Group was formed in 2005 to give new birth to a practice called Evanda as a tradition of the Ambanja kings and queens. They dance very slowly but stamp their feet harder rather than higher with their hands up in the air making a sign of a cow horn. They sing about the Ambanja culture and how they keep together as a people. They wear bracelets around their wrists and ankles for protection. The Itumbapo cultural group was formed in the year 2000 and the name means to lift yourself up. The dress is made up of black cowhide and brown calf skin and is referred to as the cow and its calf. The dance is a play to represent this practice. The cow is a sign of wealth to Ambanja people and they sing and dance to honor it. The Nambula Yanesa cultural group was named after a prominent school teacher who retired in 2008. They dance the Udano, or choreographed songs about situations that becomes a theater play or drama. The stick symbolizes protection for the Kwaruthi. They dance and sing about daily events that affect them and to honor their school at cultural events. The unique Utapi War Museum was once an underground bunker that served as the headquarters of the South African Defence Force, or the SADF. This base was attacked on numerous occasions by the People's Liberation Army of Namibia, the military wing of the then Southwest African People's Organization, or SWAPO, and finally abandoned by the SADF in 1989. With its restaurant, internet cafe and accommodation facilities, a visit here is a must. This statue at Ongulumbashe pays homage to Namibia's founding president, Dr. Sam Nioma, a central figure in the liberation struggle that brought independence to the country. The Ongulumbashe Memorial commemorates the beginning of the Bush War 
on 26th of August, 1966. On that day, South African forces launched a 23-year war against the Southwest African People's Organization of Namibia, or SWAPO, here at Ongulumbashe. Since Namibia's independence in 1990, the 26th of August has been celebrated annually as Heroes Day. Formed in 2010, this group was named after Kakuru Kaze Mungunda to honor her dedication to the liberation struggle of Namibia. The women sing to praise themselves for the roles they play in their community. This 600-kilometer open canal system supplies northern towns and settlements with water from the mighty Kunene River. The Ruakana Falls takes its name from the Odiherero word Orua Hakahana, meaning the rapids. This geographic feature is dry for most of the year. But after good rains between the months of February and May, the Kunene River becomes an angry mass of water that thunders into the gaping 120-meter gorge. The Makalani palm tree is an evergreen plant, keeping its leaves throughout the year. The leaves are bright green when young, but turn yellow to brown as they age. Donkeys can live for up to 50 years and are used as guard animals for livestock. Alien species of plants, like this frangipani, are usually used by locals to add color to their gardens. This tree originates from Latin America. One of Africa's botanical treasures, the marula tree, is most well known for its fruits that apparently drives elephants mad. Pollinated by bats and nocturnal insects, the flower of the baobab tree emerge in the evening. 28 meters tall, this tree is known as the Ombalantu Baobab tree, the tree of life, or Omukwa wa Ombalantu. The trunk can accommodate about 35 people inside it. It has served as a chapel, a post office, a house, a police station, a bar, and a hiding site during various stages of Namibia's history, and is estimated to be 800 years old. In Western Itosha, the wildlife has developed without too much human disturbance, and rare species have established themselves here. Rich in waterholes and used as conservation of breeding ground, this section of the park was previously not accessible to mainstream tourists. Tosha's elephants are the tallest in Africa, but mineral deficiencies mean that they have very short tusks. The adult male weighs about 5,500 kilograms and stands 3.5 meters tall. Although tough, an elephant skin is very sensitive. Without regular mud baths to protect it from burning, insect bites and moisture loss and elephant skin suffers serious damage. Accommodation facilities in the Omusati region suit a variety of budgets to ensure your holiday experience is unforgettable.
Kuluri is a joint venture with the Conservancy out of the Utapi and the Ovambu and the Omashati region. Everything that you'll see around about here is pretty brand new. The joint venture between the Conservancy and Okuluri is to increase the income to the population out here at the Conservancy. A certain percentage of the total income that's being generated through Okuluri through tourists that would go to the community and the conservancy to help them to provide them with the necessary things like upgrading water holes. For us it's to protect the game and to help the conservancy to protect their game. We are working in, uh, in the same area and the, the aim is like the same to conserve uh, trees and wildlife. Our conservancy is conserving the wild animal where we have the core area which will find different types of uh, uh, wild animal like uh, springbok, giraffe, zebra, kudu and different types of uh, birds like vulture and eagle. Hi guys, welcome to the Endless Horizons cooking show. We're located in the gorgeous Msati region, which is known for its amazing baobab trees and calming landscapes. Today, I'm gonna to be preparing for you a dish using local ingredients found from the market here. Firstly, we're gonna be using mopani worms. Mopani worms have a high rate of protein, so I'm really excited to be using them. Secondly, we'll be using the omauni fruit, which is a little bit tangy, but adds a great flavor to a dish when incorporated into it. Thirdly, we're using something called ontaku, which is a local drink made from maize. The first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be making a dip for the mapani worm and vegetable tempura using some of the omauni fruit that I actually just grated earlier on um, using a regular grater. This is the texture that you should expect. Don't have any seeds in the actual mixture. So we'll take our maoni grind and we'll just spoon about two teaspoons or so into regular mayonnaise. Give that a good stir. And that's ready to be put on the side for now. Secondly, we're gonna prepare our batter for our tempura and our vegetable combination. What you need is some regular self-rising flour. You need some sparkling water. And by approximately five milliliters or so should be enough, but it depends on the amount of flour that you have. So you'd pour that directly into the flour. And some rosemary just to give the dish an extra kick. You wanna give that a good stir. And this is about the consistency you're looking for. For the third stage of the process, we're going to be taking our mopani worms, which you just wanna soak beforehand in a little bit of salt water, drain that water and soak them again. Then you add that those mopani worms into your actual tempura mixture and you're ready to fry. I love the sound of sizzling mopani worms. You'll notice you have a good batter when you can actually see the mopani through the batter. So ideally you want these to cook for about three to four minutes. Drain off some of the oil, you don't want an oily dish. And then you put them directly on some tissue paper. You just wanna repeat the process with your vegetables. In this case, I chose carrots and peppers because I just think they're so vibrant and colorful, much like the people in Omsati, and also because they add an extra bit of flavor to this dish that you wouldn't get from any other ordinary vegetable. So I've already pre-cut some. You just wanna put your veggies in your batter, the same, exact same batter as that that was used for the mapanis. Try and get every single color in there, yellow pepper, green pepper, and then the orange from the carrots. And again, we're just gonna fry these for approximately the same duration as that of the mapani worms. And here we have it, a wonderful version of a mapani and vegetable tempura. Make the endless horizons of the Omsati region your next holiday destination.